We'll start, as we always do, with the Pledge of Allegiance. Rise as able, please. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Um, Again, welcome. I don't think I have any introductions. If any policy board member has somebody from staff here you'd like to introduce, please, please do so. Um, all right, let's uh, go right into the roll call and find out if we have a quorum. Town of Ashland, Mr. Hodges. Here. Ms. Barnhart. Charles City County, Mr. Atkins. Bill Cody in. Thank you. Chesterfield County, Mr. Carroll. I'm here. Mr. Holland. Here. Mr. Winslow. Here. Mr. Miller. Goochland County Chair Lumpkins. Here. Ms. Lascolette. <clears throat> Hanover County, Mr. Davis. Vice Chair Peterson. Here. Ms. Pritchard. And Ranco County, Ms. O'Bannon. Here. Mr. Thornton. Mr. Brannon. New Kent County, Ms. Page. Here. Mr. Tiller. Mr. Evelyn. Powhatan County, Mr. Williams. Here. Ms. Carmack. Yeah. City of Richmond, Mr. Addison. Ms. Jordan. She's she's here. present here. She's <laughs> present. She's here. Ms. Lynch. Dr. Newville. Here. Mr. Jones. Ms. Nye. Ms. Robertson, Capital Region Airport Commission, Mr. Rutledge, GRTC, Ms. Adams, here, RMTA, Ms. Dean, here, PDOT, Mr. Totten, here, Mr. Riblet, here, CTAC, Ms. Guthrie, here, thank you, Ms. Erickson, DRPT, Mr. Vinsky. Here. Mr. Sparks. FHWA, Mr. Nelson. Mr. Rucker. One second. Okay. FTA, Mr. Koenig. Rye Finders, Ms. Tisdale. Here. Ms. Ruffin. And Virginia Department of Aviation, Mr. Harrington. Thank you. That concludes the roll call for attendance, and we do have a quorum. Thank you, Ms. Firestone. All right, we'll move to the chair's chair's comments. Uh, uh, don't have a lot other than to. So, is next consideration of amendments to meetings? It is. I was looking at the wrong place. Yes. <laughs> thank, thank you, Ms. Thank you, Ms. Oban. Um, yeah. So let's let me. I just heard of the gavel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, thank you for keeping me on straight. Amendment. So it, everybody has the agenda in front of them. Or is there any request to move anything around, to make any amendments, additions to the agenda? Uh, okay. And now we see where we're going. That's why I noticed. <laughs> okay. Ms. Um, the uh, under the consent agenda, um, you will probably ask this, but unfortunately, you have to leave it on. Uh, if we could remove the meeting minutes. Um, <clears throat> usually minutes are not on a they I often they are, but usually I'm gonna say that they are because so many times let me let me just let me just uh, we'll, we'll take care of it. I will do that. What I normally do, this is this is something to speed up the meetings, the consent agenda. I'll we'll do that. What I always do with consent agenda items is when we get to that, I'll ask if anybody wants anything pulled out. But I'm gonna <clears throat> leave this we'll we'll pull it out. We'll pull it out. Just, just let me know, and we're already consider it done. That's going to be pulled out, and we'll deal with it separately. Um, but when we get to that, um, yes. And good morning, Mr. Thompson. Okay, thank, thank you for catching that. So we will. Any other requests regarding the agenda? All right, seeing none, we have an agenda, and and we'll note that the minutes will be pulled out. And when we get to that, if there's anything else that any any policy board member wants discussed separately, we'll, we'll pull it out. 
So, Chair's report, the Executive Committee we met, obviously, before, had a, uh, ended up, the discussion was largely on the upcoming uh, transportation form. The tentative date is March 17th, so that's almost here. The time we're looking at is like maybe 8.15 to um, noon. We're going to try to do a hard stop at noon. Maybe uh, I think there's some ideas of having a, a giveaway, prize giveaway at the end that would start at noon. But uh, the one thing we got out of the meeting was let's keep it in a reasonable time frame so uh, people will aid, be willing to attend and also we won't lose people at the end. Um, lots of good discussion about the topics and where we're going. I think we have a good good fr a good framework to work with and staff. I'll be working with staff. Some other committee members will be engaged in, in reaching out to some, some uh, community partners. And uh, I think we're going to... Uh, we're going to be ready and it'll be a good presentation partnering with the chamber and also in anticipation of their inner city trip to Kansas City, Missouri, which I think takes place in May. So we'll launch them off with some good questions. So that was that. We are delighted to have one of the things I started was a, a little locality highlight. I'm so glad to see Ms. Page here in New Kent and you, the floor is yours, Ms. Page. And Thank I'm, you, Mr. Chair. Um, first of all, Happy New Year to everyone. I'm very humble um, that you asked New Kent to, um, to highlight some of the activities um, in your text message. I think you said you wanted something that was newsworthy. So I have plenty for you, sir. Um, uh, first and our newsworthy, we are very, very excited because we have hired a planner slash transportation director and she is present with us today and that's Miss Amy Inman. And so we are so excited um, that she's uh, with the county. We're gonna take very, very good care of her and, um, and try to hold on to her with everything we got. Um, and then um, Board of Supervisors often get in trouble when we are asked to highlight what's going on in the county. And I get excited and I keep going on and on and on. And so um, to prevent me from getting in trouble, um, we have with us our EDA director. However, recently uh, appointed as our assist assistant county administrator. And um, that is Mr. Matt Smolnick. And with that said, um, if you think I like to talk, you watch this one. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, Matt Smolnick, Assistant County Administrator for New Kent County. When Ms. Page told me I had three hours this morning, I said, that's awesome. So, so we can start the clocks now. No, so, so really, um, look, just a little bit about myself. I've been with the county for eight years. Community development background, planning and zoning. Economic development now, assistant county administrator. But I'm holding on to those those bullet points. In my ED job, the the mover and the shaker, the the guy who travels and, and talks for 15 hours a day. So, um, you know, when Miss Page asked me to come here, I was like, absolutely. So, um, my elevator pitch when I'm in a in a room full of strangers out in Phoenix, Arizona, fastest growing locality in the Commonwealth. That's that was just you know, released again by Weldon Cooper Center. Uh, the numbers that came out this past weekend. Um, household median income. 130% of the Virginia average, sandwiched between two MSAs, interstate. Uh, I got a winery for every 6,000 people, a golf course for every 6,000 people, and Virginia's only thoroughbred horse track. And you can send your kids to any public school and not worry about the education that they're getting. And that gets their attention. That's my 30 second elevator pitch. And that's, you know, I I've lived in the county. I used to drive an hour and 40 minutes when I first moved there to my job in Iowa, White County. I said, because I'm going to raise my kids in this, in this community. We're going to send our kids to public school. And now I get to tell that story. I tell that story to Bill Rhodes, the uh, CEO of AutoZone. Got to tell that to him over the last couple of years. Guess what? Biggest investment in, in company history, dropping that there. And I've told the board, you know, all these times, economic development is not getting your backpack leaf blower, blowing the leaves in your yard, and it's done. It's, it's that long, tedious process. And, you know, it's, it's one of those, those jobs where you fail 95% of the time, but you keep on going. Um, but New Kent, uh, special place in my heart, um, you know, looking around, you know, when I talk, when I talk around, I said, I'm doing these 12, 15 hour days. Yeah, I'll do them for you all to get a brewery or something like this. But you point over to the kids, uh, the table of kids over there, the six year olds. I'm like, that's why we do it. I said, we plan to make this a community for them, uh, not just for us. So, you know, 
let's back up, you know, 11 months ago, AutoZone announced, three days later, Churchill Downs says, hey, we're buying the track. Whew, that was, that, that was, that sent us into a whirlwind. And, you know, that really changed the, how I approached my trips with VEP and, and, and just really the outlook of our community. Instead of, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, that, that gas pedal is still on the floor, um, but, you know, it's not all on, you know, us going out beating the bushes. You know, our phones have been lit up like Christmas trees and 300 acres around AutoZone is now under contract. We got a road built, we got a $2 million TPOF grant, built a road, uh, almost a mile long industrial road in five months, got that in. Um, Scannell Properties, you know, they've come into the community, they've, they're locking down 150 acres. We've got, uh, you know, just the, the cross here is are on Richmond. And, and, you know, the Weldon Cooper numbers are showing that Richmond is growing faster than the Northern Virginia regions now. And you look at those fastest growing localities, us, Goochland, Louisa, Chesterfield. I think those are four of the top five right there. You know, so, so Richmond is hot right now. Um, you know, listen to Jennifer Wakefield talk at a, a Richmond Region Tours meeting a couple weeks ago. It's not what it was eight months ago, but it's back to almost the normal, you know, the amount of calls that we're getting. Um, so, you know, the, the Board of Supervisors, you know, I was, I'm working on a piece right now for the Richmond Times Dispatch. You know, did you guys plan for this growth? Yeah, we did. You know, it's, it's you know, water and sewer to every interstate in, uh, interchange. Uh, you know, protect the rural areas. Um, we've tightened down some of our provisions for cluster ordinances. Uh, you know, the, the secret's out. Um, you know, the secret's out on Richmond as a whole. You know, I'm here talking about New Kent County, but you know, I'm all about regionalism. You know, you know, if, if Chesterfield gets something, we're going to benefit from it. If we get something, Henrico is going to benefit from it. It's just this big food web. Um, so, so that's what it's all about. Um, you know, some of the, the exciting things, the newsworthy things, I, I think one of the biggest things we're, we're looking at this summer is with Churchill Downs. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I thought you had a, I, I, I saw you scratch and I thought the hand went up. So not you're yet. good, you're good. Okay, not yet. An <laughs> <laughs> hour and a half in we're gonna take the questions. So, you know, Churchill Downs, you know, purchasing that property and there was the governor's announcement they're bringing two grade one races, a grade two, and you know, the granddaddy of them all for the last 15 years or so has been the Virginia Derby. That's a grade three race, folks. So now all of a sudden, the Arlington Million, the, uh, the Beverly D Stakes, those are two grade one races, same as Belmont, same as Kentucky Derby. Um, and, then, uh, and then we're getting a Secretariat Stakes, which is a grade two race. And when we met with the executives early December, you know, I looked at them, I said, okay, what are your goals? Um, first of all, get to 5,000 HHR machines across the Commonwealth. With Dumfries under construction, I know they had a top and off ceremony a month and a half ago right there on 95. They're going to drop, I think, 1,800 HHR machines there. So get to 5,000 machines is the first goal. I said, what's your other goals? He said, nationally televised race on a Saturday afternoon in New Kent County. I said, how great would that be to, to turn on ABC and, you know, here we are in, at Colonial Downs, um, really right in my own backyard. Uh, uh, so, so it's it's just such an exciting time from an industrial standpoint, commercial developments. You know, we're seeing the national tenants come in. Um, you know, of course, ninety nine percent of my job I don't talk about, and I wish I could. But uh, if if you could see the excitements that you know bound up in between my ears, uh, you know, you, you would only imagine you know what we, we, we the potential of what we've got coming for New Kent. But, you know, again, this isn't about New Kent. I mean, it is, but it's, it's not. You know, we, we, we as, a, as, a, as a society, we as a community, we're still a bedroom community between the Hampton Roads and the Richmond Market. So I'm still coming to Henrico. I'm still coming to Hanover to spend my money, um, you know, for, for the entertainment and whatnot. Um, and, you know, thanks to the, the work that the, the region has done, uh, the secret's out on, on all of us. Um, you know, and, and we're just going to go stronger and bigger together. Um, you know, obviously we've got our own uh, indiv individualistic rules, uh, you know, um, and I'm, I'm really focused on 224 square miles, but, you know, working with Martha, working with the, the, the other rural economic development uh, leaders of this community, Richmond Region Tourism, this board, uh, you know, we're, we're just stoked because now we've got 64 widening coming on. Uh, you know, we were talking with VDOT. Um, you know, phase one, two, and three, and we're gonna have 29 miles of interstate under construction all at one time, um, which is, you know, it's a blessing, uh, but then it's gonna be a curse for five or six years. Um, now I know our fire chief hates the ways that because it pushes everybody on our side streets. Um, you know, and with, with rural areas, there, there's really only, there's three east-west paths through New Kent County. 
when 64 shut down, like it was a couple days ago, we had a, a truck with riprap hit, his bed went up, hit an overpass, rolled the whole thing, caused complete chaos uh, east, of the, east of the city. Um, but, you know, we deal with those growing pains. We're dealing with the growing pains in our schools. We opened up a new elementary school uh, this past fall, planning for the next middle school. Um, you know, our, the, the strain on our, our fire EMS, our parks and rec, it's in our, in our development review staff. It's, it's there. It's real. Um, but you know, we've got a board of supervisors who, who understands that they, they understand where we're at and it's not stopping, you know, and they understand that. Um, so how are we going to plan to maybe not stay ahead, but at least keep up with this growth? Um, I'm going to pause right there. Does, it, does anybody have any questions on anything that we're doing all the way? Here's the thing. So I, I had a conversation earlier today. New Kent County, you know, we used to be the trees between Richmond and Williamsburg, and that's what people, that's what people said. And I, I remember sitting down at the uh, convention center, Richmond Convention Center, maybe five years ago at, for a mar Google marketing seminar. And uh, I sat down next to two young ladies, I introduced myself, and they said, New Kent, I said, you drove all the way from New Kent? I'm like, yep. I said, how long did it take you? I said, 17 minutes from my office. I said, where are you all from? Short Pump Town Center. I said, who was your commute? 34 minutes. Okay. My commute's half the time yours. And that's that's the really the we're in that sweet spot. We're in we're in downtown Richmond, 15, 17 minutes. I'm in Colonial Williamsburg, 15, 20 minutes the other direction. You know, you, you can live on 20 acres if you want, you can live in a planned unit community. You know, we, we've got those options. So so we're really blessed where we're at. Um, and I'm I'm very if you can't tell I'm excited about my job. I love working with this page. Well thank thank you. Thank you so much. Ms. Page, did you have anything to add? I um, just always want to um, let um, this, this body know, this organization know, um, how grateful we are with the support in uh, widening the I-64. Um, Matt touched on it, Mr. Smolnik touched on it briefly. However, some of our businesses, they are, um, they are dependent on that widening. They want to know when it's going to be done, the time frame. And so I think that um, with, when we talked about the Port of Virginia, when we talk about getting those teal trailers through, and, um, and we see a, a bunch of them every day up and down the interstate, but safety and um, all of those things are very, very important to not only New Kent County, but to every um, jurisdiction that's represented here. And so we're grateful for the opportunity to, um, I'm grateful for the opportunity to in introduce our staff members and always excited to have Mr. Smolnik around. And um, just like I said, he prevented me from telling something I'm not supposed to tell. <laughs> so um, thank you. Thank yes, you. <laughs> Quick so, uh, question. You, 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 you referenced the growth that we saw in the article, you know, the Weldon Cooper numbers. Yes, sir. Um, what is the current population based on that? So I think we're at 25.3, okay. so somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. And how much did that elementary school cost you to build? 32 million. 34, yeah, 32. 32 how many million. students? We're about six. We're planning for about six. Six, seven, eight, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And one of the things that we did with that school is um, when we talk about being a great partner with Colonial Downs, um, that we established that we were going to have a set aside for that school because we knew it was coming. And we got interest rates at a great time. Um, and um, I don't want to offend any architects, but we sent the school back board back to the drawing board and um, sort of curved their wish list to a need list. And um, so we came out um, financing only 20, around $20 million for that school. Gotcha. We didn't even finance it. And, and, and then on, on the, uh, the the wish and the wants that uh, Ms. Page just mentioned. So so one thing that we've, you know, we, we've seen and I was, Matt, I want this, I want this. No, no, you need this. You know, one thing that we've seen is the, the connectivity, the, the high speed internet. So we are, we're proud. We've actually had a town hall meeting last week, partnered with Cox Communications. Uh, work has already begun for a fiber network across the community. So. Uh, in the next couple of years, every single home, no matter where you live, will have fiber to your home. Um, and it really levels the playing field for teleworking, uh, recreational and, and, and educational purposes. And 
and it was nice. We partnered with Cox and we took that colonial downs money. We slid it across the table. Here's cash, pay for it, go, which was just a, a phenomenal thing for, for our home-based businesses and for our, our educators and students. Well, thank, thank you so much. And I was going to say thank you for coming all the way from New Kent, but it's not that bad of a trip. There you go. <laughs> thank you, everybody. All right. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Small. 17 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> thanks again. Thank you, Ms. Page. Uh, so, open public comment period. Anybody wish to speak to the policy board? And anybody online? Yeah. Okay. We'll move along in the agenda to the consent agenda. Um, the way I've asked, uh, chat's still, chat still with us, right? I don't see a little box on there, but so I'll, we're going to we're going to at the request of Ms. Savannah, we're going to pull out the uh, board meeting minutes. Is there any board member wish to pull anything out else out for separate discussion, Mr. Hodges? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I commend you for putting items on the consent agenda. I don't think we've done this before. I was interested in a little more detail. Um, what's the criteria for putting things on the consent agenda? I intend to support everything that's on the agenda, um, but uh, I don't know if CTAC or TAC, excuse me, but TAC has reviewed this. I don't know if the projects um, fit into our uh, plan. It, it's it's just the letter or the resolution. Again, I, I intend to support them all, but I think if, for them to be on consent, there should be a little more information so that we're comfortable when we don't know the project and don't know who's reviewed it. Would be my comment. Thank you, Mr. Hodges. And, and let me see if this addresses one of the things when this was discussed. The way we handle our consent agenda, it's it's not totally relying on everybody having read it before and and it not being discussion. So what I want, what I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Parsons to do is go through and give a summary of each item and they will still have discussion. It's just that if somebody sees something that they really think should have a little more than just a, a review from Mr. Parsons, then I would just ask that we pull it out. Um, uh, so that, that answers my question. Okay, good. So except for the minute meetings, I'm going to ask, uh, which we'll discuss right at the end of the consent agenda, or we'll, we'll deal with the request. I'm starting with item 4B. Um, I'm going to have Mr. Parsons just walk us through um, each item. <clears throat> All right. Uh, always listen to my lawyer. The lawyer just had a suggestion. Let's just take care of the minute meetings right now. <laughs> All right. So um, we'll talk. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion. So moved. Mr. Dr. Holland Second. and Mr. Williams, any discussion on the January 5th, 2002 policy board me meeting minutes? All right, hearing none, we'll do a, a voice vote <coughs> approving them. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, any abstentions? I'm abstaining. <coughs> Abstention. Let's, let's announce your abstention. I'm a Joy Dean abstention. I was an Mr. Mr. Dean and Ms. Dakota. Okay. And Ms. Ms. Dakota. Okay. Who's that point? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. So so now we can we've taken care of four A and pulled it out. Is any uh, not, no no request to pull anything else out? So Mr. Parsons, would you mind uh, doing a brief summary of each item, starting with four B? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Items 4B and 4C are both requests from Ride Ponders for a letter of support uh, for two separate grant applications. 4B is for uh, the Cash for Carpool grant program um, through the uh, Department of Rail and Public Transit for FY24. Um, the consent action is approving the letter of support uh, that is included in the packet. Item 4C is a similar letter of support for FY24 uh, for the Park and Ride Signage Project. Um, this is another grant application from Ride Finders. Uh, item 4D is a resolution. Mr. Parsons, Mr. Parsons, hold on a second. Make sure that if you picked up your agenda packet, the, the letter on item 4C has been modified slightly from what you have in your stapled agenda packet. There's a separate, there's a separate uh, 
separate sheet there at, at the table. So I think it was, uh, I quickly compared it, it's minor changes, I think, in the, in the number of park and ride lots. Was, was, um, Reduced from nine to six, so that they would be VDOT on the operator. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. thank All you. right, continue, uh, sorry, 4D, uh, four, four Mr. Parsons. 4D is a resolution in support of Chesterfield County's uh, Poet Parkway Extension Phase 2 project application. And this is for a, an FY23 raise grant, uh, federal raise program. Um, the action is the approval of the resolution. 4E is a similar uh, request in support of Chesterfield County's Hopkins Road, uh, Beulah Road to Chippenham Parkway Interchange Improvement and Road Diet Project. Again, another uh, raise grant application for FY23. And 4F uh, is a, the final uh, request from Chesterfield County in support of uh, its Route 150, Route 60 interchange and multimodal improvements project application. Again, for the FY 2023 raise grant program. And those, um, those resolutions are included. Uh, item 4G is the uh, work status and financial report that's included in your packet for December of 22. And then 4H is the CTAC report uh, from its January meeting in 2023. Um, those uh, are both information items. Um, we usually have those as separate items on the agenda, but uh, be happy to, to include them here in the consent agenda or, or pull them out uh, if you wanted to have more discussion about those two items, 4G and 4H. Okay, well, certainly, I think we're not going to preclude any discussion. Just, uh, I think the idea is we are comfortable not having an in-depth discussion because we didn't pull them out. So any questions on any of those items before we do a roll call vote on the consent agenda? Uh, Mr. Parsons, when does, we did an executive committee, we skipped over the CTAC uh, update. When does CTAC, we have their January meeting, their next meeting, they're they're going to start meeting um, in person again, right? And, and that's not that's not until March, though. I believe that's correct. And if Mr. Lance is in the room, he may be able to provide more information. Yes, or sir, Ms. Becker as well. If she's online. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, we, we are planning to meet in person for the March meeting. Thank you. Thank you both. Okay. All right. The chair will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items 4B through H. So moved. Dr. Holland and Dr. Newbill second. Thank you both. Um, any discussion? And let's do this roll call vote, please. Mr. Hodges. Aye. Mr. Coda. Aye. Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Holland. Aye. Mr. Winslow. Aye. Chair Lumpkins. Aye. Vice Chair Peterson. Aye. Ms. O'Bannon. Aye. Mr. Thornton. Aye. Ms. Page. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Ms. Jordan. Aye. Dr. Newbill. Aye. Ms. Adams. Aye. Ms. Dean. Aye. And Mr. Totten. Aye. Thank you. The motion carries. Thank you all. Rolling right along to new business, um, and I think Mr. Bushing is going to field all of these, uh, all three of these items, and starting with one, the federal performance measures reporting. Mr. Bushing, floor is yours. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I am filling in for Ms. Ryan on this first one. Um, so the federal performance measures reporting the, there are two letters in your agenda packet so the action that is requested today is to approve both of those letters to send them on to OIP and VDOT and so the important dates the deadlines for each of those letters for the safety performance measures is February 27th and for the asset condition and system performance it's March 20th so um, we'll go ahead and get both of those knocked out at the same time um, basically what these are the federal uh, law requires us to have the performance measures and report on them. The safety is an annual target that is set, so the board has to adopt this target annually. Uh, the others are every four years. So this is just happens to be the year for both of those. 
Um, so we're adopting both sets. Um, the safety statistics you can see on the screen, um, these are, the first column is the trend line value. So this is like five year rolling average, what would be expected. The goal percent reduction is what the CTV has adopted. So that's the statewide target. Our option is either to set our own target or to follow the state on setting and on the target. Um, and at tax recommendation, um, the letter would follow the uh, statewide uh, target. So that is the final column, the target value that's set there. Um, the second set, as I mentioned, is every four years, we have to look at asset condition and system performance. Um, so this is pavement condition, bridge condition, um, and then also like person miles uh, that are reliable throughout the interstate and national highway system, and then truck travel reliability along the interstates, which is basically how long is the worst travel periods compared to the normal tra travel periods. Um, so again, in this one, you have the VDOT target. So this is the state target. Um, the next three columns show our performance. So as you can see, we're expected um, currently, we've been meeting all except for the bridge condition. Um, so that's sort of where the region is, and these are the targets that we would be adopting for the next four years to try and achieve. So the requested action today is approval of the two letters that are in the packet, and those would then be sent along to the state, um, which would then forward them to Federal Highways as requested. So if there's any in-depth questions, I'll try my best to answer them. Otherwise, I may have to um, get back to you on some of the details on, on the methodology. But um, I'm happy to answer any questions now. Thank you, Mr. Bushing. Any, any questions? Yeah, Mr. Bushing, what, what is uh, a good, responsible answer or rationale for all the state of our bridges and our improvement on that? Sure. I, I didn't hear the last part, Mr. Thornton. What, what's a good measure of what? Could you repeat the last part? I'm sorry. Could you repeat just the very last part there? What's a good measure of what? Uh, I almost forgot what I said. <laughs> it was a good question, though, when you asked it. <laughs> well, to know what the rationale is for no, no. the Why statistical the showing bridges? here of what the state of our bridges are. So I, I will defer to VDOT to answer some of the questions about the current bridge condition, <laughs> uh, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm sitting in the wrong place today. <laughs> Uh, yes, Mr. Right, so, yeah, Mr. so realize that um, several years ago our focus changed. Uh, for many years, we had had primary focus on removing structurally deficient bridges, so which meant essentially removing those elements that uh, made it structurally deficient. In the last few years, we've changed to two measures. One is structurally deficient uh, and attaining certain percentages, and the second is more of uh, what we would call an average general condition rate, and. Uh, that's a more of a health index of the overall uh, nature of the bridge, whether it's the superstructure or the substructure. Um, and really, the goal is to make sure that we're making the investment soundly. So what I'd say is two things. We were doing great with structural deficiency, but what we realized is from a, a health of an asset management perspective, that didn't always translate to overall health. It targeted specifically those that were at the end of their life cycle and replacing. So we've moved to where we're man trying to manage uh, more from a preventative maintenance, restorative maintenance, as, opposed, as well as some replacement. So I would say that what you'll see over the life cycle in the next 10, 20 years is you'll see those numbers begin to trickle up. Uh, it does uh, change, it changed our philosophy starting in 2019. Uh, we expect to see those numbers continue to uh, you know, trickle in the right direction. Uh, but our health is actually much better than it was 15 years ago, um, but we have some focus area dealing with the average general condition rating that we need to get to. I hope that helps at all. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Glad to do it. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir, Mr. Williams. Dale, a uh, quick question. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your answer. Uh, going back to this thing about, you know, going to the end of the life of the bridge, when you say, well, you know, it's structurally deficient, we can't use anymore. Haven't y'all gone to now doing things like changing the performance of the bridge, you know, the weight bearing capacity, where you're limiting, for example, in the lifespan of the bridge, you'll, you'll now say, okay, I mean, you'll put up signs and say, you know, vehicles limited to such and such weight, and you'll move, you know, that 
you know, forward as you go through the life of the bridge, limiting again the carrying capacity of the bridge. Is that correct? So there are two different things, Mr. Williams. So the, the carrying capacity is driven by the inspections, the regularly scheduled inspections. To two things. One is driven by the inspections, but we also recently had some federally mandated programs dealing with emergency vehicles and special use vehicles that required us to take a different look um, that in some cases necessitated the lowering of the, the low carry capacity. Um, that, that's a little bit, we do that anyway, it's just part of our regular safety inspection program, and that's not necessarily um, driving the decisions for the investment for replacement. They, they often go in parallel with each other, but they're, they're two distinct uh, separate things. I, I'd say the other larger thing that actually has driven some of this decision making is the State of Good Repair program, which specifically is dedicated funding <coughs> that is targeted to eliminate those elements of the bridge that make it structurally deficient. But the, the, the downposting of a bridge isn't always connected to um, uh, either a deferral in an investment or, or otherwise. Uh, realize we have many structures that uh, just simply uh, were built in the 30s, 40s, 50s. We don't have, you know, built without engineered drawings. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. as they get into their end of their life cycle, certainly uh, we have to then replace them. And it's not, they're not always suitable for investments from a restoration or corrective that would change that load rate. So they're, they're connected, but they're sort of two separate processes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Thank you, Mr. Todd. Any other questions? Mr. Bushing, have we, has this board, at least in your memory, have, have we always just followed the VDOT, the, the safety performance targets? Uh, no, we have set our own previously uh, in some cases. Um, however, the TAC recommendation was obviously this time to move forward with the, the uh, state targets as well. Obviously, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, I understood that was their recommendation. What are the consequences of, uh, of, of adopting our own? Uh, um, basically, if we have to adopt our own, we have to do our own data analysis, and it, it's essentially saying that we're going to program our investments toward meeting those different standards, different. as opposed to aligning with the state's overall programming toward the their the adopted targets. Yeah. So it's just it's additional on the MPO, um, but it is something this board can choose to do. Thank you. All right, Mr. Chair, I'll move for approval of the two letters. Second. All right, I'll give this second to Mr. Thornton. Thank you, um, Mr. Peterson, Mr. Thornton. All right, there's a motion. Uh, any, any, dis any further discussion? All right. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Hodges. Aye. Mr. Coda. Aye. Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Holland? Aye. Mr. Winslow? Aye. Chair Lumpkins? Aye. Vice Chair Peterson? Aye. Ms. O'Bannon? Aye. Ms. Thornton? Aye. Mr. Thornton, I'm sorry. Ms. Page? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Ms. Jordan? Aye. Dr. Newbill? Aye. Ms. Adams? Aye. Ms. Bean? Aye. And Mr. Totten? Aye. And motion carries. Thank you. All right. Next, uh, B2, uh, we have one tip amendment. Mr. Bushing is going to review that. Uh, thank you again, Mr. Chairman. So this item is a request from VDOT to amend the tip to add a new project. Um, this is the I-64 Ashland Road Interchange Access Report. Um, essentially, anytime you're going to change and interchange um, along the interstate system, you have to go through a process to demonstrate that it's not going to have negative impacts on the local road or on the interstate system. So that's effectively what this is doing. Uh, this is a project that's funded by the TPO. So this was selected through the RSTP program a few years back. Um, and this is just, it's finally ready to get started, so we're adding it to the TIP. So, um, overview of the project, as you can see, it is uh, planning and technical study, so it's exempt from any of the air quality. It's a total cost of $360,000, and 288000 of that would be federal funds um, obligated in fiscal year 23. And um, the amendment has been reviewed. It went through the TAC. The TAC unanimously recommended approval. It was posted on our website for public review as well, and we did not receive any comments related to this uh, proposed amendment. 
So the action requested is two parts. Um, first is adding the project to the TIP, and the second is just to note that it is exempt from any conformity requirements. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Any questions of Mr. Bushy? All right. So thank you. Sorry. Who was the movement? Right, Mr. Winslow and over here was Mr. Williams for a motion and second. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, any discussion? A roll call vote, please. Mr. Hodges. Aye. Mr. Kona? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Holland? Aye. Mr. Winslow? Aye. Chair Lumpkins? Aye. Vice Chair Peterson? Aye. Ms. O'Bannon? As well, thank you. I'll note that. Mr. Thornton? Aye. Ms. Page? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Ms. Jordan? Aye. Dr. Newville? Aye. Ms. Adams? Aye. Ms. Dean? Aye. Mr. Todd? Aye. Thank you. The motion carries. Thank you, board. Um, third item in new business, another TIP amendment. Mr. Bush? Right. Thank you again. Um, so this item is a GRTC requested TIP amendment. Um, so this is not adding a new project. This is changing the planned obligations on an existing project. Um, the project is GRTC 005. This is bus stop amenities. And what this would do is add uh, FTA 5339, which is um, buses and bus facilities funding um, to this project. Essentially, this funding was freed up as GRTC received a discretionary grant last year. Um, which went toward bus replacement. Since they had the, the funding freed up, they could put it on other bus stop amenities. Um, so this is the proposed obligations. The three highlighted uh, fields are those that are changing. Essentially what it's doing is adding the 1.4 million in uh, 5339 funds and then adding additional state match and local match dollars as well. So again, this one was uh, reviewed by the TAC, unanimously recommended for approval. Uh, the public review period was held for the 15 days as required. No comments were received on this amendment. The action requested is to specifically change three things, obligate the 1.4 million in the 5339 funds, uh, revise the state funds from 347,000 to 3.7 million, and then revise the local funds from 51,000 to 251,000. Um, and this has been reviewed by DRPT as well. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Winslow. Uh, two questions. One, um, so these funds would be freed up and they go to GRTC to be making those decisions about what stops are going to receive amenities and, and what are not, is that correct? Correct. So my understanding is, so these are formula funds that go to GRTC. Right. Um, but in terms of the decision making, GRTC has a process for essential infrastructure for, for transit stops, and that's what this is going toward is, is those um, identified improvements for the system. They've already gone through the process to, to identify the priorities. So those that list is already available as well as what you just said in terms of who's to what uh, stops are to receive amenities versus not i'm not sure exactly which ones go on this but there, there is a list available and we could get that from grtc if that would be helpful yeah, yeah. i just I, you know we I, I get pinged from time to time about stone, <coughs> stone bridge and our stop there and people wanting a uh, you know place to get out of rain and you know reasonable requests as far as that goes i just was curious where you know today we're not we don't have that list in front of us we're just appropriating the money for those purposes and i'm sure there's a million other uh, bus stops like that across the network too so thank you. thank you i guess we're we're approving the tip amendment somebody else is appropriating right. it right, right. right. But, but it has to be in the tip for to proceed right right um does grtc want to did you want to um, sure i will weigh in um as you know we have over 1600 bus stops and at the direction of our board of directors um we have to have amenities at all of our bus stops and also be ADA compliant. So we are working with each of the jurisdictions and we work closely with Ms. Barr Smith for your um, for sure. Freedom District. Sure. Um, and we're working towards making sure we get those amenities. Thank you. <laughs> Every little bit helps. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, Chair will entertain a motion. So moved, Mr. Chair. Dr. Newville, thank you. Second. And a second from Dr. Holland, thank you. So there's a motion and a second to approve this TIP amendment. Is there any discussion? 
Okay. One more roll call vote, please. Thank you. Mr. Hodges. Aye. Mr. Coda. Aye. Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Holland. Aye. Mr. Winslow. Aye. Chair Lumpkins. Aye. Vice Chair Peterson. Aye. Mr. Thornton. Aye. Ms. Page. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Ms. Jordan. Aye. Dr. Newville. Aye. Ms. Adams. Aye. Ms. Dean. Aye. Mr. Totten. Aye. Thank you, board. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. So we're on, on item C on the agenda, com, uh, agency and committee reports. Uh, first up is the CBTA. That's page 41 of our agenda packet. And Mr. Parsons, uh, can you give us give us a report on from CBTA? Yes, sir. Absolutely. We are um, continuing to move forward on uh, CBTA work. Um, we are now um, looking at the, <clears throat> the implementation of the 30 projects that were, that were identified um, in May of 22, uh, as well as the, the initial uh, commitment of funds uh, by the CBTA to the fall line and the five additional projects in the, um, the four uh, adjacent jurisdictions. So that, that project is, or, or that work is moving forward. We are working now to um, actually program in the, um, the necessary funding, uh, working directly with each jurisdiction and agency uh, to identify the year of expenditure necessary. And uh, now that there are, um, there are recommendations uh, by VDOT staff on uh, smart scale, um, uh, awards for round five. Uh, we are working to understand the impacts of, of those, uh, those funds on the, the, the projects that the CBTA is considering and, and, and how that uh, those complement each other and, and are able to be moved forward. So there's a lot of discussion taking place right now uh, and we're, we're looking forward to continuing that um, in the next month with both the TAC and the Finance Committee. Um, we also have a, uh, the project selection and allocation framework, which is essentially the guide that uh, TAC uses to help identify uh, which projects are eligible and, and worthy of, of consideration for CBTA regional funding. Um, that's intended to be updated as needed, and that's something that TAC has been working through uh, for a few months now. Uh, to identify any opportunities to, to improve the, the framework and the decision-making process so that um, there is benefit for all nine jurisdictions and, and that the, the, the intent of the regional funds is, is uh, fulfilled according to what was set out in the, in the state code as the CBTA was established. We do have a couple upcoming meetings to note. Um, the Finance Committee uh, is meeting on the 8th and the, the TAC is meeting on the 13th. Um, those are typical, the, the, this month is a little strange, so the, the Finance Committee meets a full week before the TAC, um, but that's, that's uh, scheduled uh, according to, it, to the, the, the normal schedule for both of those committees. And then the full authority is scheduled to meet on the 24th uh, at the end of the month. Be happy to take any questions, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, Mr. Parker, <clears throat> Mr. Williams. Chuck, if I wanted to see what the adopted financial policies are of CVTA, where would I go look? I believe that is on the website, but we can uh, certainly find out and, and, and send that out directly to you. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, Mr. Carroll. Just to add, um, just as a point of um, information, I just executed uh, the contract uh, for the uh, with the company to hire uh, and do the search for an executive director for the CBTA. So we we've been in negotiations um, on that contract with Boyden for the last couple of weeks to iron out what we needed to do in that. And so just signed it. Thank you, Mr. Kerr. Mr. Chair, to to Mr. Williams' question, the the financial policies are uh, shown on the the CBTA website on the left hand side. Um, I think that uh, staff has actually posted the link to that in the in the chat. If anyone in the room is is uh, is following along on your computer, but those are there um, for your reference. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. 
Um, well, while we have you up, because uh, we we're going to have some other reports in a second, do you have anything to update us on on our request from last month where we asked the TAC to look at you know, the cost overruns and, and all, the, the larger presentation that we had on on regional project cost overruns? Have, have you has the TAC uh, come back with any questions? Asked for any feedback from you? And, and what, has there been communication mm -hmm. with TPO staff and the TAC? On, on, on their our request from last month. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Miss. Was that a question from me? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, we are. The TAC is um, is is aware and and used most of its last meeting to have a kind of a, a general discussion about the the cost overruns and estimating, and uh, they are prepared to continue that discussion uh, at their upcoming meeting um, to to bring back. Um, ideas and recommendations and staff is is looking forward to supporting the TAC in that in that discussion uh, and, and I, I will note that um, there are a couple of A students in the room um, that that did uh, schedule separate time with staff to, to have a deeper dive into the cost estimating process so uh, if, if you would like to, to ask any additional questions I'm sure Dr. Nubel and Mr. Williams will be happy to answer those too. He, he, he identified the A students. Huh? Right. So I, I, I'm not going to request that, Chet. Uh, but Chet and, and Miles were gracious enough to meet with Dr. Newbill and myself to give us a better understanding of you know what was behind the cost estimates. And I think I can speak for Dr. Newbill, who may want to add her own comments, but we found it very helpful. It was. It's Absolutely. It was a good meeting, and I just wanted to thank staff for doing that. And also for the uh, A, uh, we don't take that lightly. Right. <laughs> Both got A's. And... It'll go on the resume. Yes. <laughs> do you, uh, Mr. Parsons, do you, um, are we looking at a March report back from TAC, or more likely April, or, or what? Um, I. I, I, I can't, it's hard to say, uh, Mr. Chair. I think I think a lot of that depends on the discussion that takes place at the next TAC meeting to see if they are comfortable um, uh, putting together a, a set of recommendations at that point. Good. Okay. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it. Ms. Adams from GRTC, you're, you're up if you have anything to report. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I don't have anything new from the last meeting. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Um, I think since the last meeting, we have a new CEO. I was going to say, we do have some <laughs> oh, You tried to skate right by that one. Huh? <laughs> Remember, you're dealing with the A student here. <laughs> uh, okay. Just wanted to say, make sure, would say congratulations. Yes, please tell, so tell, us, you, tell us the news, please. Um, at our, after our January board meeting, um, I was selected as the new permanent CEO. No longer awesome. ever. Congratulations. Thank you. Ms. Dean. Good morning. I don't have as exciting news as Ms. Adams here, but I do have a, a little bit of exciting news. Uh, the RMTA began uh, a couple weeks ago installing uh, our new technologies at our express lanes. Um, we upgraded those lanes, so we have new technology there. We have uh, new readers. We have new cameras. Um, as uh, the, the conversation I had with my chairman uh, last week when he asked me, well, if I drive by there, will I see anything different? And the answer was no. Mm -hmm. um, but um, just know that uh, we are working on upgrading our express lanes. Um, the downtown expressway was completed and went live this past <coughs> Monday. Um, the the Powell Height mm -hmm. North and Powell Height South express lanes, uh, the upgrades will begin uh, the middle of this month and hopefully be going live at the end of February, uh, beginning of March. Excellent. Good news. Thank you. Mr. Binsky. Yes, thank you and good morning. Um, I have a few items for my agency update for this month. First of all, we are continuing to remind all of our MPOs about our transit asset management uh, plan. Um, we completed our tier two group plan back in October and we have been encouraging all of our MPOs to adopt these transit performance targets that were identified in the plan by March 30th. Uh, Miles has been great in following up with our staff to understand where we need to put those in. We provide template letters as well as language 
Um, the deadline for that is March 30th, so um, we just want to make sure that everyone's meeting those deadlines uh, well in advance. Uh, the data related to that plan is also available on our DRPT website under our open data portal. Um, so if you're curious to see some of the targets, since you all did just review your federal performance targets, um, you can find that information on our website. Also timely, uh, with DRTC you know, noting that they got their award about um, the bus and bus facilities, uh, FTA did release a notice of funding opportunity just last week for the same, similar program. So for bus and bus facilities, as well as the low and no emission vehicle program. Um, this year, DRPT is providing more technical assistance on these grant applications. And so we are hosting a grant writing workshop on February 15th at 10 a.m. This will be a virtual workshop and I'll provide this in the meeting minutes for Janice to distribute. But I encourage anyone who is curious about some of these uh, discretionary pr programs, I know we talk a lot about from the highway side, but there are a lot of opportunities, especially with the new IIJ bill, to look at how we can fund multimodal investments like this. And so we are providing not only letters of support, but also different levels of technical assistance. So that can be anything in terms of how you identify uh, potential competitive projects, actual grant writing assistance, technical analysis, and then also reviewing your application before you submit. Um, so we do have some additional information. There is a Google form that we ask for anyone who would request that technical assistance. But if you have questions, feel free to follow up with me and I'd be glad to answer that. I know that GRTC is looking at it already. Um, besides that, I also want to note about the new census data that just got released for 2020. Um, in particular, I know FTA uh, had some changes in terms of urban areas, and that has impacts in terms of funding for some of our transit agencies. Uh, FTA is hosting a webinar on Thursday, February 9th, about some of the impacts with the new census data. Um, also of note, with new census data, there should be changes in terms of the appropriation formula for your PL and 5303 funds. And as a reminder, 5303 is the FTA funds that we give to all the MPOs for any kind of planning activities. Um, so it's important to kind of keep track of these changes with census. So if you have the time, I would also encourage you to uh, listen in on that webinar and see um, kind of the changes all over the whole country because there have been some impacts. And with that, I have my update. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions? Oh, in, in our packet um, on page 42 is your, your update. Oh, that's right. And it's January 2023. Yes. And I, I looked one. at that, and the way it's written, it, I, I looked at this and I was like, well, maybe that's just reporting what you did last month. But, but you're describing, it would be helpful, I think, if what you just described, like upcoming webinars and things like that, if we could have those in the packet. Is that is that the plan, or did we just put the wrong... It was from last month, um, so I hadn't provided it to Janice yet since some of this information had just been released this week. Um, so I'll be glad to give that out and we can provide if, that to you. If you want to provide, yeah, yes. because, and I'm looking, now, if we then register for like that workshop, marketing initiative, social media that happened on January 29th at online, mm -hmm. is, are those posted and available for, for to, can we watch to watch it online after the fact? Yes, we do have a DRPT YouTube page that does have all the recordings from some of our webinars, and I can also provide that <coughs> to the specific um, recording so that everyone can watch that as well. Great, thank you. Well, we look forward to, if you give us that update so we can see what, capture something like the links to some of the things you just described. Because I've told you before, you always have so much packed in the report that we're going to get you to earlier in the meeting and went one of the next two meetings to just give us a little more oh, yes. uh, insight into all the things that DRPT is doing. I didn't know if you wanted to wait until we talked about future meeting topics, but um, I know that we had in, been in discussion and you were kind enough to mention at the last meeting about having an agency uh, presentation. So um, since there's a focus both on rail and transit, our director, Jennifer DeBull, has actually offered to come to the March 2nd meeting to present. I figure she could cover it better than I can. Um, so you'll have uh, Director DeBrule as well as ch our Chief of Public Transit come and be able to kind of give you an overlook of what we have planned for the next, you know, not only this year, but in the next five year plan in terms of all of our real and transit initiatives. So March 2nd, if that's good. Then that, let's, let's plan on it. Yeah, thank you. Thank okay. you. We're, you know, I hope the policy board appreciates how we're rolling through this agenda for a change. Right? We're, we're taking care of things at the end of the agenda. Right now. So that's great. Um, uh, Mr. Totten on VDOT. Well, thank you and good morning. And I'll do my best to not uh, slow down the uh, momentum, if you will. Uh, just a couple items from the uh, monthly report. Um, as everybody should be aware, uh, Smart Scale Round 5 project scorecards and staff recommended funding scenario were presented to the CTB in January. 
Uh, that's information that's publicly available now. Uh, where we go from here is the CTB will develop any potential revisions to the staff recommended scenario between now and April. Uh, the final approval of applications recommended for funding by the CTB is expected prior to July 1 this year. Uh, and just really the, the big request from, or the big ask, if you will, is with the round five um, scoring and initial evaluation process coming to an end, we're already looking at how we can continue to improve program for future rounds. So in the report, you'll note that there is a, um, a survey that's open to uh, February, February, open through February 15. So if you or staff um, want to take an opportunity, we certainly would appreciate feedback uh, that will route through the district to Boyd Beef for process improvements. The other big item uh, in the report is just uh, this time of year, we certainly are in the process of in our six year plan update. Uh, just be on the lookout for our um, spring public hearing schedules and um, the draft scenario coming uh, later on this spring. It's, uh, dates haven't been set yet, but we'd expect them to come very soon here in the next uh, probably 30, 45 days or so. We expect to have that. That's all for my report, sir. I'll take any questions if there's yeah, anything any, else on anybody's mind. Any, any, any questions? Not. Right. not seeing any. Um, Future meeting topics. Anybody want to add something? I think we uh, will. <laughs> Mr. Parsons, I'm sure you heard that. We'll look at uh, DRPT for March, hopefully. Uh, um, that, that's that's a, that's awesome. Any other things on future meeting topics for, from the board? All right, any member comments? Mr. Thornton. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I have two things for one. Uh, I think in one of the reports that was given today, we were asking about approval, and uh, I'm always thinking of how maybe we can get more citizens involved, but uh, maybe we need to use the radio a little bit more to let people know what it is that we're doing here. I don't know what we have done that, so I'm maybe I'll ask Mr. Parson and staff to kind of take a look at that. Um, and with your indulgence, Mr. Chairman, the final thing is this is uh, February Black History Month, and um, Coretta, Cox, uh, Coretta Scott King said this, that the greatness of a community is most accurately measured by the compassionate actions of its members. And with that statement by Mrs. King, uh, I'd like to dedicate some metaphorical flowers to a couple of members of this group here because um, a lot of citizens have no idea of that we exist, and that's why we've been working hard to let them know what it is that we do. But um, you can't get a more passionate and compassionate person who's part of this committee than a young lady from New Kent County. I mean, she has been compassionate, and the, all the people that you can need to know how diligently she works in. So, my first bunch of metaphorical flowers is to you, Miss Patricia Page. You actually personify what we are supposed to do, and hopefully ought to. And please you. I'm so continue humble. that right. because you are the younger group. We are hoping that you will continue that. I also want to throw flowers to Ms. Adams uh, since uh, your new chairmanship and your guidance. We look forward to your leadership because we need that uh, for the community. And finally, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we had a presentation by the gentleman up here this morning. And as he was talking, I was just thinking about, uh, I didn't, I was a little more, I didn't live far from here. I lived at 4th and Mary Street. And um, I was thinking about what we do and looking at the business out there. We need to give ourselves a little bit more credit and be very thankful of what we do for the citizens. Uh, Mr. Chairman, it is so important that the Richmond that I knew is not the Richmond of today. And that's a plus. And so we have come a long ways. And it's all because of stewardship by all the people in this room and others. We need to take time out to just think about that sometimes. There are some communities that don't do as well as we do. So we just need to reflect on that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hey, hey. Thank you. Hey, hey. All right. 
Our next meeting is March 2nd. Um, I'm glad we got out of a reasonable time. Y'all have a great February, and uh, thank you for all you're doing. Thank you. We're adjourned. We're adjourned, yes. <laughs> <laughs>